Hello everyone, welcome back to part 2 of my collection. If you are new here, thank you so much for watching and welcome to my channel. My name is Paulina and recently I decided to do a Nintendo Switch gaming collection where I put out all my games, do a short spoiler free review and my thoughts about each single game and I hate long videos so I want to shorten it into 3 parts, upload 1 each week. If you haven't watched last week's video, it's right here. Let me know in the comments down below if you spot any of your favorite games or what is your favorite Nintendo Switch game. I hope you enjoyed it, let's get started! The first game we have is Mario Tennis Ace. This is a simple and cute tennis game. It's good for those of you guys who are on a sports game. So you can play single player with a story and one where you can match against your friends, CPU, and one where you can play online. This game has many functions. So in the single player mode, the story mode, it goes through stage by stage. Every stage is a different objective. I don't want to spoil you about what there will be, but every time there will be something including with fire flowers or with toad. And the game sometimes will be very fun, sometimes will be a little difficult. My favorite objective is when 8 or 10 fire flowers stand in front of you, they all spitting fireballs at you, then you shoot it back and then the fireballs they spit out will kill them at the end. When they all die then you win. This is one of the easier ones. It could get difficult sometimes and uh, what I like the most is a uh, free play mode. We can free to choose any map you want. It's like it's like wind gemmas. You take a map you want, you take two characters you want, you can play against CPU or other player. I never played against a CPU, I don't know how that feels, but it's very fun because you can choose any map you want, how long you want the match to be and the characters are every time different. The characters have different traits. Like my favorite is Princess Rosalina, she's a tricky shooter. Sometimes without I do anything, she will do a trick shot or something like this. And there's a the speedy one. I believe it was any of the turtles. It was Yoshi or other yellow turtle in a green shell. And my dad played him once and he felt annoyed because he don't know which button he pushed and then the turtle goes into the shell and then flips to the other side of the map. It's very fast but hard to control and he don't like it. And then there's the ones like Bowser and Mario who are stronger but not so fast. Overall, I think the game is great. I never tried the online mode out so I can't tell you how that feels. But overall, I think the game is great if you're on a sports game, it's easy to learn, harder to master. Next one, we have Captain Kinopio. It's a little more childish but simple and it's a strategy game and a quiz game. So you play Captain Toad who will go every time on islands. The game is also stage by stage but you are flipping in a book. Every page is a stage, when you finish one, you flip to the next page and it's a book. So the stages are every time a floating island. The island goes bigger and bigger later when you unlock more. Every island is a different map, like there was grasslands, there were sand castles. Sometimes on grasslands there's rivers, I found them really cute. Because you know those Mario games now, they, they really have high graphic or a cute way. I really like all the maps and you have to really do quiz on the island. Sometimes there's anything under the grass, you broke the grass and then maybe there's a secret tunnel, secret coins, secret tool and then sometimes you have to move the camera around. The island is 3D so you can move the camera from left to right, from up to down, from bottom up and sometimes behind something, behind any small stone or something, there's a secret tunnel with coins or treasure inside. It's like in Mario Brothers where you collect 100 coins, you gain one more life. But the main objective on the island is to find star or moon in the world. Star or moon it was where you can collect from 1 to 3. You collect 1 and you can finish the stage, but if you collect 3, that's the maximum you can get. I collect some 3 because the, the games are every time really easy and I like it very much. It's a good quiz game for younger kids. Next one we have is L.A. Noir, one of my favorite games. I play it together with my dad, sometimes I do little driving, sometimes he drives, and then we will go investigating the cases together. I believe his name is Cole. It would be a shame if I don't know the character name of my favorite game. The game is from Rockstar who also made Red Dead Redemption and GTA V. So you play this policeman who is an honest man, he was ex-military, he was on the beginning on the traffic police area, later he goes higher and higher when you did more cases, he got a promotion, he go later solving murder cases, robbery cases, Vice is the highest where he's driving around Hollywood solving their cases. They're using the real cases from the time of 1940s, I believe. I mentioned this game a long time ago in my favorites video because I think the game is really good. If you already have this game or any other console and you play the story already, you totally don't need it. But the game is very good. So you take a robbery case, we say a robbery case. Somebody says somebody stole from them anything and then you figure out later there was nothing missing, he was only Trixie or things like this. Or there's a murder cases where they bring three people inside, suspects, what they believe is a murder, you talk to each person. Every time you talk to someone, there's three options. You trust them, you doubt them, and you confront them. Sometimes they are lying, then you can see it like, I wasn't there on that day, I really didn't know what happened, and then they're looking around, and their eyes are nervous, and they're playing on their hands, and you know they are lying. And sometimes you confront them with evidence you already have. Like he said he wasn't there, but you found like a piece of something on like his clothes or any button 
with blood on it on that ground from him, then you can confirm them with evidence. Sometimes you doubt them and they still don't tell the truth, so then you are a bad cop who can't get even the evidence out of them. And I think overall it's really fun to play an investigator, a detective, and a policeman. It was fun playing this game, and I think the game was a little too short. I wish there was more cases to do, but I really enjoyed driving through the city. Next one is Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. I didn't play this game a long time. I believe Mario's friends, Princess Luigi, was turned into rabbits, and then they was transformed into the Mushroom Kingdom, where the Mushroom Kingdom is falling apart because there was evil rabbits who was mutant. And the game is a strategy fighting game on a very cute way for kids. So you are walking to a 3D world where you know there will be fighting scenes because you crossed a certain point. For example, you crossed over a bridge, there's a scene that looks like a battlefield, and you know there will be a fight starting, you can prepare your guns. In this game, you're using guns as weapons, laser guns. And then when the battle starts, it's like a strategy chess game. You can decide where you want to move, how many steps you want to move, where you want to go, and if you are in an area in range of shooting on the people, then you take your guns out and shoot at them. The best is to hide every time behind any brick wall or something like this. Later, the game goes more and more open, and the battlefield is bigger and bigger, they have tunnels. Like like you go from this side down, you come from the left side up or things like this. It was fun playing it and a little strategy, a little more cute, a little more battle. You have a little bit of everything. It's basically an RPG game with a little combat. Next one, we have Super Smash Bros Ultimate. I never tried the game before, we bought this a few days ago, and my dad only tested one match out. I think he know more about the game, he explained me how the game works. It's an old game made for a new console, maybe you guys already know the game more than me. So there's total 64 characters in this game, which is a lot for a fighting game. It's like Street Fighter in a newer, modern way, with more characters than I like, and much more characters. There's Kirby, there's Link, there's Prince of Peach, I can already see me play this game, and Pikachu. There's 64 characters in the game, but you're not getting them all at the beginning. There's different modes. You have to play the story mode to unlock every single character, unless, unless you're like us. We have the game Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, so we unlocked already Pikachu in the beginning. He's very cute and knows awesome to unlock a character at the beginning. My dad tried one match at the mesh mode, smash or mesh mode it was called. You take a map and you take a character, then you can play against CPU or against the other player. He fought against two CPU, he fought against Pikachu actually. He chose an airplane mode where you're playing on a driving aircraft, flying aircraft that shakes and moves up and down a little bit. He told me this is like Street Fighter, but you not beat the shit out of the enemy and kill them. Basically, you have to kick them out of the map. He kicked Pikachu so many times out of the map and she Pikachu got hands back on the aircraft, hanging on it, and it was looking like a very fun game, and I want to try it out. I enjoyed the game Street Fighter, but this time they have more cute characters that I like. They are all characters from Nintendo games. There's Link, Mario, the Splatoon characters, Pokemon characters, then Link from another Zelda game. I decided to try the game out. If I try it out and I like it, maybe I include in a favorites video or something like this. And the last game for today, well, this one's disappointing. Zelda Hyrule Warriors. I did two gameplays of this video on my channel, and normally I don't do gameplays. And I'm, I don't know if the game is a flop or I'm not interested in it. I was really looking forward into the game when me and my dad saw the trailer. It looks amazing. It looks like the screen is cut into half. You play the left side, someone else plays the right side. It's a multiplayer game. You go into a big city and you're killing a lot of people, bad people. And it looks really fun, like a fun action game that I would love to play. And then the whole thing is different. Well. What they showed in the trailer is existing real. Let me explain to you how the game works. You have the story mode where you have to play. You have to play as a single player the story forward. Link, something happened to the kingdom. Zelda was missing and Link and Zelda's protector was looking for her. But later a person comes called Shike. And my dad went all his Zelda experience told me Shike is a princess under any mask. And basically you have to play stages forward. For example, you play 1-1 and then you unlock 1-2 in the single player mode. And then 1-1 will be unlocked in the multiplayer mode. So in multiplayer you can only play since you already played in the single player mode, which is sucks. And you know what? It's not like the stages are easy. Every stage costs at least like 30 minutes to finish. As you can see, my gameplays are 30 minutes long videos because it takes really long to finish off a stage. In a stage, sometimes you have to rush into the enemy base and stop the wish from doing an evil spell. Sometimes you have to kill an evil giant boss. It's every time different and basically the enemy have his main base and many small bases. You have also your main base and many small bases. Every time you take over an enemy's small base, then your soldiers will standing there and supporting you when you need them. And I hate it. 
if you play alone, you was fighting against the enemy and then somebody ran into your main base, killed in general the whole game ends, and you was on the last two minutes fighting the boss or something like this. I hate the game sometimes because you have to focus on too many things. You have to focus on your small bases, on your main base, and then on the boss who is actually rushing into your base or things like this. I don't like the game so much, it was really disappointing, not what I expected. And you know what's the worst thing when you play the story mode? If they say, Three people split up. Shike goes on the top to the sky map, and Link goes to the bottom to the grassland map, and the princess protector goes in the middle to any earthland. You can't change which character goes which line. The story decides for you which character you can play, the story decides which map it will be, and how the story goes forward, and I don't like it. So this game is good for those of you guys who like to play chapter by chapter where they're telling you what to do and you're following comments but I want an open world game. This feels like my One Piece game that isn't open world and I don't like it so much. And that's it for today's part 2 of my Nintendo Switch gaming collection. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please thumb up and subscribe if you haven't already. I will upload part 3 next week. Let me know in the comments what is your favorite Nintendo Switch game and I will see you all next time. Bye!